Hello students, welcome to today's lesson where we are going to look at factors affecting heat transfer. We have the first one, the nature of materials. And this one refers to what material is making that conductor. So we look at the setup that we have here. We have a container that is having hot water. Then we have several rods of different materials attached on it and at the end we have the wax that is fixed. So we are supposed to observe which of the wax falls first. So in our observation we find that the wax that is attached to copper drops first, followed by that of aluminium, iron, lead, and finally you find that the wax that was attached by on the wood did not drop because wood is a poor conductor of heat. And we, if you look at that, we need our explanation here. We have that different materials have different strength of force boarding the atoms within the materials. And also, different materials have different number of free electrons. If a material has many free electrons, then it will be a good conductor or a better conductor than other materials. So in this case, copper has many free electrons than iron. And that is why we find that the wax from the copper is falling fast. Then number two, we have the thickness or the diameter or the cross-sectional area of a conductor. In our case here, we are going to consider two brass rods. They are of different thickness, A and B. We move to procedure. Number one, we are supposed to hold one head of rod A in one hand and one head of rod B in the other. Then we put the other heads in, in the basin burner flame. Then we note how long it takes for you to hold each metal rod that is inside the, the flame. Then we have the observation. The head of rod A held in the hard becomes too hot area than rod B. Why? Because thermal conductivity increases with increase in cross-sectional area of a conductor. So rod A is thicker than rod B. So it implies that the number of free electrons per unit length of a thicker metal, that is rod A, is more than those in rod B. And therefore, those free electrons that are many in rod A are the ones that are transferring heat faster to the colder regions. Then number two, we have the temperature difference. In our case here, we are going to consider two illustrations. One, we have a brass rod of the same thickness and of the same length that is being heated using Bunsen burner flame. Then we have the other one that is being burned or that is being heated using the water. So procedure number one, hold one head of each rod in your hand. Then number two, put the other head of one of the rods in the boiling water. The boiling water is about 100 degrees Celsius and the other one on the Bunsen burner flame which is about 500 degrees Celsius. So you can see that the flame has higher temperature. Then you are supposed to note which one takes a higher time or which one takes longer time for you to hold before it becomes too hot for you. Observation. The rod placed in the flame becomes too hot area than the one placed in the boiling water. This is because the rate of heat flow, that is thermal conduction, increases with increase in temperature difference. Explanation for this is that thermal conductivity in metals is by two mechanisms. This one we have mentioned earlier. It is because of the vibration of atoms and the presence of free electrons. So it implies that a higher temperature difference will supply that atom or those conductors with energy and the atoms will vibrate vigorously and because atoms are joined by spring like boats it means that the vibration is passed more quickly to the cooler head again the electrons that are present in those materials will acquire a lot of kinetic energy and as they get kinetic energy they will vibrate vigorously or move fast 
and that will cause spread of heat energy to the cooler part of the metal within a short time. Then we move to the fourth factor, the length of a conductor. And in this case, we are going to consider the two, two rods, A and B. A is longer, B is shorter. Procedure number one, hold one head of rod A in one head and rod B in the other hand. Then put the other heads in the burner flame. Remember, we are using the same flame. Then how long does it take? for each rod to become too hot for you to hold. We have our observation. The head of rod B becomes hotter, area than A. Why? Because thermal conductivity increases with the decrease in length. So explanation. Heat travels within a conductor along imaginary lines and these lines we call them the lines of heat flow. They diverge from the hot head towards the cold head. As you can see in our diagram here, these are the lines of heat flow. They diverge from hot head towards the cold head. So it means that if the material is short, it has so many lines of hot lines of heat or flow and therefore it becomes hot faster. But if you have a longer, like rod A, if it is longer, as you can see at towards this edge, you find that you have fewer lines of heat flow. And therefore, this one, it will take a lot of time or a longer time for it to become hot. Now, when we have that the, 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 the conductor is covered with a material or it is lagged, then you find that those lines of heat are uniform. So lagging is covering the conductor with insulating materials to reduce heat loss through conduction. Now, if you look at the figure that we have here, we are saying that if you lag, this is the conductor, if you lag, these lines of heat flow are straight and therefore you have reduced heat loss through conduction. Where do we apply the lagging? So when we have iron pipes carrying steam from boilers or from steam wells, they are always covered with asbestos. Asbestos are insulators and this will reduce heat loss to the atmosphere. Therefore, the steam is able to maintain its temperature. Then in summary, we can be able to say that the rate of heat flow or what we call thermal conductivity increases with increase in temperature difference, which implies that the rate of heat flow is directly proportional to the temperature difference. Then number two, it increases with the decrease in length L. So it implies the rate of heat flow is inversely proportional to the length of a conductor. Then number three, it increases with the increase in cross-sectional area A of the material. The rate of heat flow is directly proportional to the area of cross-sectional area. So if you increase the thickness or the diameter, you also increase the thermal conductivity of that material. Then it increases with thermal conductivity value K of the material. And this one, we have seen that it is influenced by the presence of free electrons. So if a material has many free electrons, its thermal conductivity value is high. So that way, we are able to see the four factors that affect thermal conductivity. Then finally, we have the assignment. As you can be able to see, this assignment are testing just what we have covered. So make sure that you are able to read, recite, reflect, so that you can remember. Then attempt the assignment and make sure that you get everything. So thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.